What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to use the distance formula. So we're going to go through five examples, and let's get started. Now for the first question here, we just want to determine and state the length of the line segment with the following endpoints. And if you really like formulas, this is the formula for the distance formula. And we'll just write it out real quick, and then I'll explain how this works. But anytime you have two points anywhere in the plane, we call them x1, y1, and the second point we call x2, y2, we're going to use this formula to find the length of any segment. So if the first point we call x1, y1, and the second one we call x2, y2, then all we have to do to find this is just plug right into the formula. So we have x2 minus x1 squared. So we got negative 9 minus 6. We're squaring this plus, and now we've got y2 minus y1 squared. So in parentheses, we have minus 4 minus 4, and this is being squared. Now, just so you know, it doesn't matter which one we call x1, y1, or x2, y2. I could have called 6, 4, x2, y2, and this point here, x1, y1, because at the end, we're going to be squaring this, so if it comes out positive or negative, it doesn't matter. So now what we have is we've got negative 9 minus 6 is negative 15, and that's being squared, plus negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, and that's being squared. So we work this out negative 15 squared is 225 plus negative 8 squared is 64 and this gives us the square root of 289 which is 17 so the length of the line segment is going to be 17 units now for the next example i want to do this a little bit different let's say you have bad memory i know i have trouble remembering formulas and you want to have an alternate way of doing this well one thing you could do is you could always sketch this out and you could draw a triangle between the two points you're trying to find the distance between so what I mean by that is if I have A is the point negative 1, 3, that means I'm going to the left 1 unit, and I'm going up 1, 2, 3 units. So A is over here. And then B is at 3, negative 3. So I'm going to the right 1, 2, 3, and I'm going down 3 units, 1, 2, 3, like this. So here's B. And what we're going to do for this question that's a little bit different is I want to connect these two points with a vertical line and a horizontal line. So notice I'm drawing this vertical line down to this level at negative 3 and then I'm going across and I'm gonna make a right triangle so this method is pretty nice because now I just have to count the boxes I have ver a vertical distance here of 1 2 3 4 5 6 and I have a horizontal distance of 1 2 3 4 and the length of the segment we'll call X so notice if you forget the distance formula from before all you have to do is solve for X in this right triangle diagram and now we could just use the Pythagorean theorem. So we would have this leg squared. We have 6 squared plus this leg squared is 4 squared equals the hypotenuse squared, which we're going to call x squared. And just know the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, and the hypotenuse represents the length of the segment that you're trying to find the length of. So now we just simplify this. We have 36 plus 16 equals x squared. So we uh, add these numbers together, we got 52 is equal to x squared, and we have to write our answer in simplest radical form. So when we take the square root of this, if we were to stop at square root 52, that would be bad. The goal is to come up with perfect square factors of 52. So what goes on in my head is I just think of what are some perfect squares. So here are the perfect squares, at least the first few. So which number in this list will divide into 52? And the only one that's going to divide into it nicely is going to be 4. Or the biggest perfect square in the list, I should say, is 4. So this I could break down as square root of 4 times the square root of 13, because 4 times 13 is 52. And now I just think here the square root of 4 is 2, so I have 2 times the square root of 13. So this is the length of AB in simplest radical form. If we want to write it out formally, we could say AB without the symbol above. This means the length of AB is equal to 2 square root of 13. And just know for a geometry notation, you could also say the measure of line segment AB like this is equal to 2 square root of 13. But this is fine. This is our final answer. So for the third question here, we have Katrina is hiking. So we'll start with the letter K, and this represents where Katrina is starting. And she goes five miles north. So let's go ahead and just draw this vertical line in. So she's going five miles north. Then she goes east for seven miles. So we'll just draw this horizontal line in here. And we'll label this as seven miles. And then finally, to end the hike, she goes three more miles north. So we'll just look at this here. Now, the trick to, and this we'll call, this is the end, 
or where she finishes the hike at this point. The trick to doing this question though is noticing that these two vertical segments can be combined in a way that will simplify this diagram for us. Now what I mean by that is if I draw a right triangle just the idea is that Katrina at one point went five miles north and three miles north so that's a total distance north of eight miles and then she goes a total horizontal distance to the east of seven miles. So if we want to know what is the straight line distance from the start to the finish here, we could just find the length of this hypotenuse of this right triangle that we have here. So we'll just call this hypotenuse x. But notice this makes a right triangle because she's going north and east. So those form right angles if you're just going north and east. So to find this distance here, this straight line distance from start to finish, we just have to find the length of this hypotenuse here. So we could use Pythagorean theorem. So one of the legs is 8 miles. So we're going to do 8 squared plus the other leg squared is 7 squared. And that's going to be equal to x squared. We'll write miles, the units at the end. But for now, we're just solving this equation for x. So remember, this is x miles. So now we have 64 plus 49 equals x squared. And when you add these two together, 64 plus 49 is going to give you 113. So then to solve for x, x is equal to the square root of 113, and we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So we'll just say we're approximating here. This is 10.6 if you punch this in a calculator. So to the nearest tenth of a mile, how far in a straight line is Katrina from her starting point? We're going to say 10.6 miles, and we'll circle this as our final answer. Now question four, there's a lot going on, but it's all about staying nice and organized and reading very carefully. So we're told to get from school to home. Jamal goes five miles east, then four miles north. So that means the high school, we'll just say on the grid, is over here. This is the high school. And for Jamal, he's going five miles east. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five. So he's going five miles east. And then he's going four miles north. So that's up one, two, three, four. So we'll label this as a we'll, we'll label this with a J to indicate that this is Jamal's home. But remember, the total travel here was five miles east. So five miles east and four miles north. But now we have another person to account for. Now we're gonna consider Sheila. Sheila is going home from the same high school. Okay, so she's going from high school to home as well. And she's going eight miles east. So notice, starting in the same direction, but just going an extra three miles east than Jamal did. So eight miles would be an extra one, two, three. So from the starting point here, this is for Sheila. Sheila is going eight miles east total. And then she's going two miles south. So one, two. So this is where Sheila lives. But the goal here, this is the actual question, is what is the measure of the shortest distance to the nearest tenth of a mile between Jamal and Sheila's home? So what we actually have to look at here is what is the distance between J and S? So what we could do here, if we want to use the grid, is we're going to count the vertical and horizontal distance between these two points. So to go from J to S, I would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six units. Okay, so this is going down six units. So we'll leave that over here. So this is six miles south. And then if we're going east, this is going to be three miles east. See, we're going one, two, three. So what we're actually finding here, if we bring this off to the side, make this a little bit neater, is we have a triangle. Six is the distance for this leg is six. And the distance for this leg is 3. And if we want to use the units, this is in miles. So we'll say the hypotenuse, x miles, that's our solution. That's the straight line distance from Jamal's house to Sheila's house. So now we have 6 squared plus 3 squared is equal to x squared. And we'll put the units at the end. We have 36 plus 9 is equal to x squared. And now that tells us 45 is equal to x squared. So x, the distance is going to be the square root of 45. And the square root of 45, if we work that out or we approximate it to the nearest tenth of a mile, this tells us it's going to be 6.7. So to answer this, what is the shortest distance? We're going to say 6.7 miles 
is the shortest straight line distance between their houses. Now, they said the use of the grid is optional. If you did this without the grid, the idea would just be to note that there's a three mile difference between how far east they're walking. And notice here that if Jamal is going four miles north and Sheila is going two miles south, they're going in opposite directions. So in this case, you'd have to think of it as four plus two because that's the absolute value of their distance between them. So it's a little bit trickier without the grid. That's why I 100% recommend that you use the grid for this because then it's obvious on how to draw this triangle. Remember, we're drawing a triangle between J and S and we're finding the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle to answer this question. So for this last question here, we have Jerry and Jean Jogger start at the same point from point A. And so for this last question here, we have two people jogging. We have Jerry and Jean starting at the same time from point A. And we're told that if they're starting from here at point A, we're, to we're told stuff about Jerry first. Jerry, or we'll say Jerry's rate that he runs is five miles per hour. And we're told that he runs from A to R. So we'll highlight his path first, from A to R. Then he goes from R to S, and then from S to point C. So in this case here, to count the distance that Jerry is running, so we'll just say the distance is equal to, we just count the boxes. So he's going north two miles, assuming this is north, east, south, and west. So two miles north, then one, two, three, four miles east and then one mile north. So if you add all of this up, this is seven miles that Jerry is running in total. But now the idea of what you need for this is that the rate is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time traveled. So if we wanna come up with something for the time here, we have to use the idea that the time, I could call this R divided by one, could come from solving this equation for T. So I have D times one is D, equals RT, and this tells me that T is equal to the distance divided by the rate. So that means I'm gonna take the distance, seven miles that Jerry is running, and divide it by the rate that he runs, which is five miles per hour. And when you divide these two, notice seven divided by five is gonna be 1.4. And if you think about it, miles divided by miles per hour, just a little concept over here, if I do miles over miles per hour, when you divide fractions, you keep what's in the numerator, you change the operation to multiplication, and then you flip the term in the denominator. So I'm gonna flip this to hours over miles, and notice miles over miles cancels, which gives us just hours, which makes sense because the unit for time is gonna be hours. So it takes Jerry 1.4 hours to run from point A to point C using this path here. But then what we're told next is that Gene jogs directly from point A to point C. So you see going directly from point A over to point C here. Now, there's a few ways you could find this distance, but we'll get to that in a moment. We're told that Gene jogs at a rate of three miles per hour. So we'll say Gene's rate is equal to three miles per hour. But now for the distance, this is where we have options. We could use the distance formula here. And if we wanna use the distance formula, remember, we're gonna call this point x1, y1, and we'll call this point x2, y2. We could do that, or we could have the option here of drawing a right triangle between these two points, and then finding the horizontal and vertical distance, and treating AC as the hypotenuse to find that length. But either one is gonna work. For this one, we'll go ahead and use the distance formula. So now to solve this out, what do we have here? Remember, it's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. So x2 is six minus x1 is two, and that's being squared. Plus, and now we have y2 is seven minus y1 is four, and that's being squared. So notice this is gonna give us four squared. So we're gonna have 16 plus, this is three squared, which is nine. And remember, at the end, the distance is in miles. So we have miles outside the square root. And the square root of 25 is five, so this tells us that Gene runs for five miles. So that's the distance from point A to C directly. So now, the last thing we have to do to determine, remember the actual question is we have to determine which jogger reaches point C first, and we have to explain or show our reasoning. 
So we just have to calculate how much time did Gene take to run from point A to C. So the time, remember the time we could find by doing the distance divided by the rate. The distance Gene runs is five miles divided by the rate is three miles per hour. So to work this out, five divided by three is one point and just a repeating sixes here. Miles divided by miles per hour is just hours. So if we look at this, Notice it took Jerry 1.4 hours and it took Gene 1.6 hours. So since Jerry was able to do the run in less time, Jerry got to point C faster. Okay, I just tacked on a little reasoning here to support our answer. But once again, Jerry is the faster one of the two and is able to get there at a faster time even though he zigzagged. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the distance formula. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.